out there in Cyberland uh, who are joining in to our Tuesday morning uh, Bible class. And uh, yeah, I got to focus on what I'm doing. There's a lot of things going on here and I'm all over the place. Y'all just stay with me. And I want to welcome everybody out this morning. I want to welcome, uh, I see Brother Donnie Whitfield Jr. just joined in. And I see Sister Lork is here, Sister Fauntleroy, Sister Nikia Wallace. Uh, let me see who else. Uh, Sister Price, Sister, Sister Rosa Green Price. Good morning. And I just want to say good morning to everybody. And I, I'm sure there's some on the phone line that I may not know are here, but I want to say good morning to everyone. I want to walk you out to uh, uh, strengthen your faith. I'll strengthen your faith for uh, Tuesday morning Bible study class. And um, the study that we're working on now is the Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, well, we're working from the book, the Holy Spirit, his personality and work. And the section that we're beginning in lesson nine this morning is the Holy Spirit and uh, proper use of spiritual gifts and their duration and this is such an important thing to understand so that we can uh, uh, continue to strive forth to stay with truth and in order to stay with truth you need to understand truth amen and this is a wonderful study on the holy spirit i've learned so much uh more in debt than what i've knew, known before about the holy spirit through this study and I hope that it's blessing everybody else that is partaking in this the same way. Because as long as we're in Christ, we're going to continue to grow. Amen. Uh, so this morning, I want to open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, the great God of heaven, we come to your throne of grace, uh, giving you thanks and and giving you honor and glory, dear Father, for helping us to uh, enter into this new year, dear Father, one we've never seen before. And dear Father, we just pray that our, our being here, dear Father, that we continue to grow in your faith, that we continue to grow in your work, dear Father, that we continue to grow in your will. We just pray, Father, that you, uh, first of all, we give thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. We ask this time, all of us are here, that you please forgive us for any sins we may have committed, committed dear Father. Be a word, thought, or deed that we uh, start this Bible class off with clear conscience. We just pray, Father, that through your engrafted words, you strengthen each of us where we are weak. And we humbly ask you, as only you can, to remove the shortcomings that just seem to be too great for us. Father, we just pray that you as the master teacher and master counselor, please uh, be in the midst of us, dear Father. Help guide our minds with our hearts and the way we should go to gain all that you had in store for us through this study. That we we are uh, we ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So those of you who are uh, don't have books, you can and you're on Facebook, just please join in with the PowerPoint presentation. This will uh, take you through what we're going to talk about today, uh, what we're going to study today. And for those of you who have books, we're, your lesson is on page uh, 48, which is lesson nine. Page 48, which is lesson nine. Okay. And the most of all, please have your Bibles. because This is a Bible study. Amen. Uh, I know I got to do one thing I didn't do. I got to get my glasses out. They're here, but I don't have them out. My glasses are no good if they're not being used. Hmm, I can see pretty good now. Amen. All right, so I'm going to give you a recap of how we got to this point in our study. Uh, we began with studying the, per the personality of the Holy Spirit. And after that study, we went to the study of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And from there, we went into the Holy Spirit and his relationship with Christ. 
After that, we went into uh, uh, the Holy Spirit and Revelation. And then we uh, studied the Holy Spirit, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And from there, we studied the gifts of the Holy Spirit. After that, we studied the Holy Spirit and tongue speaking. And then we got into the Holy Spirit, which we just completed, the Holy Spirit and miracles. And now we have entered the chapter nine, which is the proper use of spiritual gifts and their duration. Amen. So that's that's the journey we have traveled, and that's how we have gotten to where we are right now. All right. So we're gonna start with the reading. Uh, uh, first, I want to start with some uh, just some of our minister notes, you know, and uh, uh, questions to uh, of today. What what does it look like? Uh, an application to use your gifts for the glory of God. And I want I want you all that's uh, uh, online to type in, type in an answer to that question so that we can read it out aloud to the class. You can share, you know, uh, your understanding. And the question again is, uh, what does it look like an application to use your gift for God's glory. Okay. And those who are on Zoom, you can add yours uh, uh, if, uh add yours into the uh, uh chat. chat room. Or just raise your hand and, and if you're on Zoom, you can speak out loud. Okay. So uh each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, because that's what it's for. As Stuart as faithful stewards of God's grace, it is a uh, uh, grace in its various forms. So there's many different forms uh, that we can use our gifts. There's many different forms the gifts come in, and we'll talk more on that. God has uh, spiritually gifted each and every follower of Christ. So what am I saying? All of us have spiritual gifts. You know, not 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 so much like the first century with the miraculous gifts, but we all have spiritual gifts that God has given us for the edification of the body of Christ. Amen. And spiritual gifts are not the, are the, not the goal. They are the gateway. They are not a hobby to play with. They are tools to build with, you know, weapons to fight with. We will be we will be more effective as we put them to use for the glory of God, not for our own will. Amen. And that's something we all need to understand. Everything that we do, everything that we have is for the glory of glory, the glory of our God. When used properly. Amen. Amen. So we're on page 48. And uh, Sister Lork, uh, 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 wait a minute, we have here, wait, wait, where did you start? Some of the brothers. I'm on the wrong page. I'm looking here in my page. Okay, I ain't look, it's not looking right. Okay. Uh, Sister Lork, you want to start with the read? Sure. Huh? Some of the brethren at Corinth demonstrated their ignorance of spiritual gifts mm -hmm. by their attitude toward them and the way they executed them. Ignorance concerning spiritual gifts had a bad effect upon the church at Corinth and is also having a bad effect upon some today. Paul, did you want me to stop? Yeah, you? stop right there. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to understand how uh, uh, relevant the word of God is today as it was in the day that it was written. Uh, because it, 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 what started then is still affecting the church today when people don't understand uh, uh, what these gifts were, were, were for and the duration of these gifts. You know, uh, so, so it is it's imperative that we understand because uh, it clearly states and it clearly has it, 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 the ignorance ignorance and that's the key word ignorance concerning spiritual gifts had a bad effect upon the church in Corinth and it also the same ignorance is having a bad effect 
on churches today. Uh, anybody got anything they'd like to say? Amen. Amen. Uh, continue brother. to read, Sister Lou. Oh, wait a minute. Donnie, Donnie, brother Whitfield, I see he. Go ahead, my brother. Well, I was going to be brief. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I just, just wanted to say spiritual spiritual gifts, uh, you know, they definitely have control. You know, if you run into your religious uh, counterparts, they try to make it seem like that um, that spiritual gifts don't have control. Uh, you know, like 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 temperance is in there as well. You know, it doesn't it doesn't uh, uh, puff itself up. Not spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are something that 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 comes from a humbling place. Uh, and in fact, it's not something that you even realize you have until other folk that has the Holy Spirit uh, uh, can recognize what they see from what they read. Thank you, my brother. You know, and Sister Laura, if you want to continue with the reading about Paul, Paul sought. Paul sought to display his ignorance by informing, by, I'm sorry, Paul sought to display his ignorance by informing the Corinthian church concerning the design of spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit's purpose in bestowing these gifts and proper circumstances and the way in which these gifts should be exercised. Paul also emphasized that spiritual gifts were a temporary measure until the perfect law of God was completed. Amen. 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 Which lets you know, uh, uh, and we're going to look further into the scriptures to ver just to verify what we're reading here, is that all this was uh, all for, for a period. For a time, it was it was for a time. It was a temporary measure. For a time, <laughs> you know, for the perfect law of uh, God was completed for some of the gifts. These for the miraculous workings, mm -hmm. the gifts that was imparted through the Holy Spirit to the apostles, who could impart them to others. You know, those particular gifts. Uh, uh, but just as our, our brother Whitfield said, we have gifts. You know, and one of them is temperance. Which means we need to be in self-control. Or the, there's a whole list that we've been studying. We've been studying. Uh, uh, matter of fact, in, in our Thursday uh, Bible study with Brother Woodfield, we've been studying about these gifts, you know, and what they're for, and how we are to use them. Because it's all it's a list of them, and 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 they're not miraculous. <laughs> they're not miraculous. Every Christian can possess. Uh, a measure of these gifts that we're talking about. Amen. Amen. And uh, let me pick up with the reading here. And our goal in this lesson, <coughs> excuse me, is to study Paul's instruction to the Corinthian church concerning the uh, proper use of the spiritual gifts and the duration of these gifts. You know, our aim is to show that all spiritual gifts were to cease when scriptural knowledge was completely revealed, meaning when they have completed the New Testament writings from the God, God are, are guided, the Spirit guided, the Holy Spirit guided men to pen down what God instructed them to pen down. Once that was completed for us, you know, it was made perfect. And those gifts that we needed to get to that point were no longer needed now that that which is perfect has come. Amen. Amen. Brother Whitfield, you want to pick up on reading the proper use of spiritual gifts? The proper, the proper use of spiritual gifts. Uh, Paul uses 1 Corinthians 12. 14, 12 through 14, to regulate the problem of spiritual gifts, their diversity, duration, and proper use. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul considers their origin, that they are from God, their variety and use, that they all were intended for the same purpose, 
the advancement of Christianity and the edification of the church. He illustrates. Hold it right there, bro. Hold, hold it right there. Hold okay. It right there. You know, let's let's let's, let's looking at the fact that he had uh, pinned down. God had him pinned down these chapters in First Corinthians twelve. So some, uh, 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 and you see what they're addressing. They were addressing the misuse. They were. He was addressing people who are misusing these gifts. You know, but he also was instructing to them why you were given this. And the purpose of the gifts was to advance the Christianity and the edification of the church. Anything that we do, if it's not to uh, advance Christianity and edify one another, then we should be doing it because that's our sole purpose as Christians. You know, it's not for self gratification, it's not for self edification, it's for the edification of the church. Meaning the world church, don't, don't think of a building. Think of people. You think of you and I. We are the church. You know, and it's for the edification of one another, to keep one another strong, to keep one another moving forward, the advancement of Christianity. Amen. Any comment, bro, before you move on? No, sir. Go on and finish reading it. <laughs> he, illustrates. He, illustrates, he illustrates this by an allusion to the human body in which all members have a mutual relationship and use. 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 12 through 26. The church is the body of Christ and the members are, are variously uh, gifted uh, for the benefit of the whole body. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 30. Well, this chapter that. closes. Oh, go ahead. Let's do some read. Let's do some scripture read. Let's go to uh, 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 chapter uh, 12, 20, 12, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, 26, 12, I mean 12 through 26, because it's important. I love this chapter. I love what it, when it talks about when it breaks down the importance of the body. Importance of every part of the body. And uh, I'm going to pick up the read from chapter 12, chapter 12, uh, verse 12. For as the body is one, it has many members, and all the members of the body of the one body, many being many, are one member, so also is Christ. For by the Spirit, we, are, we were baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into the one spirit for the for the body is not one member but many for the foot shall say because i am not the hand i am not of the body is it therefore not of the body and if the is shall say because I can't I I am not the eye I am not of the body it is therefore not of the body which is question if the whole body were an eye where were the hearing where were the hearing uh, hold on, I just lost my place. Uh, and if the ear, and if the ear shall say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. 
If the whole body were an eye, okay, I had to back up. If the whole body were an eye, uh, where were hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? But now, as God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are uh, they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need for thee. Nor, again, the head to the feet, I have no need for thee. And well, I'm going to stop right here. And see, what, what he's alluding to is that every part of the body is important to the functioning of the body. You know, because uh, sometimes we, we tend to elevate uh, certain parts of the body and, and, and diminish the importance of other parts of the body. But every part of the body of Christ Every part of the church, every member of the church is important to the body, is what it's saying. Amen. Amen. Nakia Wallace says that the uh, benefit of the gift is not self-gratification. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm starting to read some of the things here. Uh, yeah, that people are sending in. And the, and the fact is, that's what it's saying. Every part of our body, every part of the church is important and should be treated so. You know, can you imagine if you had walked around, if you walk around and they had pulled all the, all the, all the toenails off your feet? Do you think you could walk around with a pair of shoes on? The, the, wouldn't the whole body be in pain? for all the toenails to be pulled off of the feet. <laughs> but no, you walk around, you don't pay them toenails no mind, but you do pay the head mind, you do pay the heart mind, but you 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 take for granted until until something happens, how important the fingernail is for that for the protecting that, that finger, the sensitivity of it. Amen. Yeah. You know, but uh, 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 well, my my point is every part of the body is important. Every member in the church is important. From the two year old that that's 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 starting to learn how to uh, 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 recite uh, uh, just once one uh, uh, book of the Bible to the preacher who's up front that's expounding on the Word of God. All the and everybody in between it. Is important to the body of Christ. Hey, brother. Hey, man. Hey, brother. Huh? That, that reminds hey, me of, that reminds me when Timothy would say, uh, we're responsible for protecting those that are feeble minded. You know, as, as nurses cherish their children, I mean, cherish a, uh, a patient um, because, because they are more delicate parts of the body. Um, that we, we just got to be aware of. Remember you mentioned in the sermon, I think it was in the sermon, um, kind of like sometimes we can forget um, how important all of us are to one another. Um, and you can't see it if you're not intertwined with one another. You're not um, a part of the fellowship. You, you can't see it. Or appreciate it. Amen. 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 And uh, uh, Sister Lord, you want to pick up on the read? Mm -hmm. uh, this chapter closes. Um, sure. This chapter closes with the exhortation to seek something more beneficial than spiritual gifts. First, this refers to First Corinthians twelve and thirty-one. Desire earnestly the greater gifts, 
and more and moreover a most excellent way show I unto you the proper use of spiritual gifts in their duration. In 1 Corinthians 13, here we go. Paul sets forth a more excellent way. The apostle discussed the qualities of love in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, and the ceaseless nature of love within the church, 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 13. Paul discusses the eternal nature of love in contrast to the temporal nature of spiritual gifts. Love will continue even after that which is perfect has come, but the arrival of that perfect law of God will bring to an end the spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 14, the apostle Paul directs the proper use of spiritual gifts that they I'm sorry, that they might fulfill their purpose, which was to edify the body. These are the regula regulations concerning spiritual gifts. Now, let's just hold right there. And let's hold right there, because I want to back up because of First uh, 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 Corinthians 13, when Paul had set forth a more excellent way, he was discussing, uh, 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 you know, the qualities of love. And we talk about that all the time. We try to emphasize uh, love, love, and, and, and what Paul says about love. Brother Whitfield, you want to grab that for me on 1 Corinthians 13, uh, 4 through 7. Let's talk about the more perfect way, uh, the more excellent way. Hello. Okay, I know you did. Uh, would it be all right to read it in the um, New Living Translation? I, I read it. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I know. I know. I know. For you, brother, when you want to read it in another translation, it, it, it reads better because you definitely a King James man. So <laughs> I, I, I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear. You want me to do four through seven, right? Four through eight? Yeah, go ahead. You, you go, go, go where you see fit. Okay. <laughs> love, love is um, patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will come useless, will become useless, but love will last uh, forever. Amen. And, 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 and hold right there, because that is so, so, because those gifts are going to be done away with, but love must continue. It is love that's going to move the church. It is love that's going to uh, uh, motivate all of us uh, to stand and the gap for God, regardless of circumstances. It is love that will make us go seek the help that's still lost center out there, regardless of where we got to go to do it. Uh, even though sometimes we're in, in, in some harmful situation, some situation we put ourselves in harm's way, but, but, but God always protects us. You know, I, I love when we go down there with Malik, uh, down in the, uh, uh, where the homeless folk are, you know, and have a chance to re really uh, engage with them and to, to uh, remind us 
uh, of our purpose. It reminds us of our purpose when we, we go on the battlefield and we go with love in our heart. The purpose that we go is with love in our heart. Uh, as, a, as the saying goes, people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. That opens the door for us to witness to these people just by uh, uh, just by doing that. You know, uh, Brother Whitfield wound up getting a class out of going down there. He wound up getting a class from an individual uh, from being down there. Had we not been there, he could not have gotten that class. Sister Lord. And also, I, I in this time of COVID, when we sometimes hesitate to teach people, love lets us go the extra mile that we often talk about to whether we do it at our homes, whether we do it in their place, whether we do it at the church building, whether we do it through Zoom or on the phone. But we realize that love says you make a way, regardless of circumstances, to carry out the mission of teaching the gospel. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lord. And Sister Nakia Wallace uh, wrote a comment. She says, most people don't realize we share the gospel because we love them. You say, and she says, I love your soul. Amen. 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 I love your soul. Amen. You know, and, 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 and for us who stay behind the walls of our meeting place, which we call the church, so many times we miss we miss uh, uh, the opportunity to win a soul. See, we can't just wait for people to come inside the building. We got to go get them. We got to go outside that building and witness to them. Rather they, and, and, and I don't care if they, they, they live near uh, Central Church of Christ. If they do, I'm going to send them there. If they live near uh, Edgewood Church of Christ, I'm going to send them to Edgewood. If they live near, you know, uh, 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 any other church of Christ they're closer to than us, my job is not to, to necessarily bring them to us. My job is to uh, teach them the gospel and have them added to the body of Christ. And, 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 and they can come if they, if they want to be in East Baltimore and they live in West Baltimore, then you come. But my job is to make it easy for them to get to the gospel. It's easy for them to get taught the word of God because I love them because it's not about me. It is not even about inner city because inner city is just a small part of the whole, you know, but it's about winning that soul for Christ. Just what Sister Nakia said, she loved because I love the soul of the individual. And then when we get out of, outside of that building, it helps us to keep it what I call keep it green. Keep it green. I mean, keep it like it was when you first showed up. That that keep your mindset at there. You understand what that person is going through that's lost. It re constant reminder of there to go I, whether you went that far down the scale or not. It reminds us of of uh, where we could have went if it wasn't for the love of God to pull us out of the grips of hell at the time that he did. That we didn't have to go any further down uh, uh, the pit, into the pit, before he reached down or he sent somebody else to reach down and grab my hand to help pull me out of the grip of hell. And that's what we'd be going down there for. To put our hand out, reach, reach, reach out to grab somebody else out of the grips of hell. And like you said, well, our Sister Lord said, we put ourselves in harm's way, but we put ourselves in harm's way to go to Giants to get some food, don't we? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I had put on my Facebook page, man, hey, look, stop. Trying to figure out where 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 the COVID is, is because you don't know. We you know every day we're walking among people who are, are infected with the COVID every single day. We go to Giants, we go to we go to uh, 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 Walmart, we go to we go out there and we're standing there with somebody who's infected. 
you know, because they came out to get some food. <laughs> you know? So we can't worry about that. You know what? When we have faith in Christ, when we have faith in God, God is going to protect us when we're doing his work. He's going to see to it that we are protected. You know, uh, Sister Nakia say, I am thankful to go. I am thankful to go. Amen. Amen. And Sister Lord can say, I remind her that the questions of today uh, is what does sharing your gift look like in application? And Sister Wallace answered, God took so much pressure off of us. He said, we plant the seed. Amen. 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 And our brother Dwayne Caskin, still, how you doing, my brother? He enjoying them with us. And uh, that, that's the truth of the matter. That's the truth of the matter. That, that he took all we do, all we have plant seeds. We don't give the increase. But uh, if we don't plant seeds, if we don't go out and plant the seeds, how can any, any plant grow? Huh? If we don't plant the seeds, how can a plant be there? for the next person that might have to come to water that seed or throw some fertilizer on the seed, because that's what we do. And God gives the increase. God brings the rain. God brings the sunshine. We don't have no control. God gives the increase for the seed that we plant to take root and start growing. It's God who gives the increase. Amen, amen. See, and when we understand that it ain't about us, and, that, and one day I'm going to do a service, not about you. <laughs> you know, it ain't about you. Too many times we make it about us. It ain't about you. You know, it's not about me. It's about what I could do for the service of God. What can I do as a servant? Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother go ahead, Brother Whitfield. I, I see you ready to jump on in there. Uh, I didn't want to be rude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted us no, to no. look at um, um, Ephesians 4 uh, and how he uh, wants everybody to see how important we are individually, regardless of uh who we think we are we are a whole lot more than the average person that's not in christ okay um starting at um verse 12 i didn't want to deal with uh the part when it talks about um god's leaders uh that's already a part of the church but he's going to explain something even deeper starting at verse 12 in the niv okay. i mean the new living translation Go ahead, bro. It says their responsibility, those leaders of the church, is to equip God's people to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord measuring up to the full and complete standard of christ then we will no longer be immature like children we won't be tossed and blown away by every wind of new teaching we will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of the body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly mm -hmm. as each part does its own special work, like those toenails. That's it right. helps the other parts to grow. The other parts of the other part helps it to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Because that, that says it all. You know that. And once we understand, if we could get a grip on that, that this is what it's really all about for each of us, each member. And to understand uh, 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 this is the job of the church leaders uh, to, 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 to uh, make sure that we press forth to make this happen for each member, that they can use their gift for the edification of the body, for the oneness of the body. You know, we'd be something else. Can you imagine what the church would look like if every member used this gift accordingly? If every member discovered what their gift is and worked in their gift, can you imagine how powerful and the movement that would take place right now with the church in America, in the United States of America? Because over in Africa and other places, boy, they they moving. They are they are moving. And that's where COVID started. You know, and here in the United States, we're stagnant. So you gotta ask, why are we so stagnant? Because we're not using our gift to its fullest measure. You know, oh, you know, question: Are we getting in the way? Hmm. Are we in our own way by trying to make it about us instead of about God, instead of about the lost soul? See, because you you say you love God, that'll make you go after that lost soul for God. Because then you're going to love, if you love God, you're going to love man. You're going to love that lost man or woman out there. You're going to love them. Enough to try to go get them, because somebody came and got and got you. You didn't get here on your own. Somebody came. God, as I always say, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. God will see to it that the teacher appear. When you are ready for Christ, you know. And if we don't work in our gift, how can we do that? Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, anybody looking for uh, uh, you can't take something away. Just go to Nakia. Okay, Nakia, she said, we fight truth. We don't know selfishness. He said, we fight truth. We don't know selfishness. We so stuck on emotions and feelings. See, that's where we get lost and we be buying into. And that's what Donnie was reading about, falling for every every wind of doctrine, every everything that comes through, every fad that comes about. We wind, we wind up falling when we are not strengthening the word of God the way we need to be. Or we're not focusing on using our gifts and going about the business of God's work. You know, we're too busy trying to feel good. And anybody know anything about feelings? Feelings will lead you up every wrong alley that there is out there that Satan will use to pull you away from God. You know, anybody know anything about feelings and, 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 and being on that emotional roller coaster, appearing to your emotions and feelings, know that you can easily be strayed to every wind of doctrine. We see it in that we see it every day. Amen. Amen. Well, where are we at? Okay. And just right, right now, while we get ready to go here, I want to uh, tell everybody that has a, a prayer request to begin to type them in because there's a lag period behind our. Uh, uh, Facebook from being Zoom. Zoom, we right on, we, we right on time with what's happening right now, but on Facebook, we're a little behind. So please get your prayer requests in now. Amen. And we're right here. Uh, I'll pick up here. And I'll, I'm going to go back to that last paragraph that was read. That in 1 Corinthians 14, the Apostle Paul 
directs the proper use of spiritual gifts that they might fulfill their purpose, which is to edify the body. And these are the regulations concerning spiritual gifts. Let's start here. It, this is okay. The motivation of for all service to God must be one's love for God and his fellow Christian. Oh, and his fellow Christian. Let me move my book over here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that should be our motivation. My motivation is to help Brother Whitfield sharpen his iron. And his motivation, you know what, is to help Brother Lord sharpen his blade. We, iron sharpens iron. Uh, uh, Sister Lord does what she does for the, for the love of God and for her fellow Christian. Each one of us. We gave her uh, a recognition award Sunday. For, and it was enti it's entitled uh, The Servants Servant Award. This is the first of many to come each year to recognize a uh, member of the body that, that is doing just what we're reading here. That is doing just what we are reading here. That felt that's the service to, uh, to God and to the fellow Christian at all costs. At all costs. And I'm just using her for example, but there are many, each one of us does that in, the, in, the, in our own way. We each do that in our own way. And that's what it's telling us here. The first motivation is service to God and to our fellow Christians. What for the edification of the church, to edify the church, to it's, it edify the church and to glorify God in front of the world. Okay. My next point is that all things are to be done for the edification of the congregation. According to 1 Corinthians 14, 12 through 27. And when we read in there, it says speaking in tongues was limited to two or at the most three individuals. And there must be an interpreter present. You know, are these spiritual gifts? There must be somebody to interpret. You know, or it's just a bunch of gibberish. You just... You, your conversation with just between you and God and, and, and nobody else in the audience is benefit from the message given. It's, it's gibberish. It's gibberish. But but the only one that, that can understand what you're saying, if if there's no interpreter, is the Lord. He's the only one can kind of understand what you're talking about. And that's not the one you're talking to. You're talking to the people. You know, uh, then it says here, prophets are limited to speak to three speakers, and each one must wait for his proper turn. You know, this is what Paul was addressing: the 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 out of the the, the, the the disorderly conduct that was taking place in the church of Corinth at the time was disorder going on. <coughs> <laughs> and the assembly of the saints. Uh, we can't all talk over top of each other, and all you, you know. And 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 uh, uh, certain things should not be done in uh, the public assembly. You know what was going on here. The next, the next, the next. Um, point we'll make, you know, uh, the wives of the prophets were to keep silent in the assembly and were asked and asked their questions at home. You know, the wives of the prophets, because they were questioning them in front of the assembly. You know, and you know, trying to exalt themselves above their husbands. See that 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 ought not happen any more than uh, two parents 
trying to correct each other in front of the children. You don't do that. You rob one parent of the authority given them over the children. When you do that, that's out of order. That's out of order. I'm just using that as a parable. You know, uh, my wife and I, when we would be in front of the children, I might do something that she disagreed with. But she would never try to chastise me about her feelings about what I just did in front of those children. Now, we might talk about it later on in private. She said, Eric, I think you, I think it was wrong. I don't, I don't, I think that could have been handled a better way or, or whatever she would voice her opinion. Because in the house, we are, her and I was the, uh, are the mother and the father. So we, we are the authority figures in the home. Uh, so she can't put me on the spot in front of the children. That robs me of my authority in front of my kids. Just like if she says something to the children and I feel different about it, I can't do anything. I'm not going to mess with her in front of those children. I'm going to talk to her later and voice what I might think if we could have done. It, it could be a better way to do what you just did or whatever. But they'll never know it because I'm not going to rob her of her authority in front of those children. And this is what was taking place at the assembly when you really get into Sister Lord. Brother Work, I have a question. I know this scripture is also being used now by the church to um, say that because it was only the prophet's wives who weren't supposed to speak, that other things can go on in the assembly. The example being that women could lead songs in the assembly. It's being uh, used uh, to say that women can, um, as part of the, and when I say assembly, I mean the, the Lord today worship that women can participate in different roles in the Lord's day worship that, that they have traditionally, or though I hear the word traditionally, but I like the word doctrinally um, used before, that this scripture is being used for that. Can can you or Brother Whitfield address that? Brother Whitfield, you want to attack that one? And Sister Law, repeat the part that she said. I couldn't hear all of it. I was saying that that scripture is, I'm told is being used at congregations to justify women leading songs in worship service and reading scripture. And, and I specifically speaking about the Lord's day's worship, um, that because it was only uh, the prophet's wives who were to be silent, that that did not pertain to other women in the, in the um, assembly doing doing things that are doctrinally done by men. That was pertaining to them and not only them, but it was expressly expressed that way so that the other women would be able to see them as an example. Um, just like how you and um, Brother Law handle things amongst the congregation it helps the other women married or not um to see how they are to operate amongst the um the entire body um especially doing those types of things you, you remember when even the bible said um it ain't permitted for the women to, to speak um and the church i think it's in corinthians 14 um, yes, but, that's where we, that's where we to. Yes. Yeah, and he said he's not the author of confusion. Um, those particular women are highlighted so that the other women will be able to know um, how it should be across the board, regardless if you're in position or not, because each woman that's especially that's married uh, in Christ their husband is still their head um, regardless in the building or not um, but over us all christ is the head of us all 
um, which which brings it into a, a closer perspective. Uh, but some people think that when it says the women are not permitted to speak, that that goes as far as that they shouldn't even say anything um, in worship or Bible study. But I know that's not true um, because Paul addressed in Romans 16 um, to all the congregations that met at Rome, let's greet our sister Phoebe and the Lord. So in a lot of cases, greeting uh, took some words as well as some um, some spiritual kisses in the Lord. I, I hope that can answer everybody's question, uh, Sister Lloyd's question for everybody, um, because because our women in Christ are definitely not to be used as doormats. Amen, amen. But there, but again, there's order in God's church that we all follow. There's order, period, in God's design for everything as a matter of fact because we must follow there's order uh okay our time is up our time is up sister nikia says is it okay for women to lead songs with other women uh with other women it is you know um you know uh the, with other women little children uh those that they they do have uh, uh authority over those children uh the, yeah yeah okay okay and uh uh brenda lane oliver says amen and uh right. jada. jada montgomery that's see we're getting some stuff now mm. is it possible to Run this back because I missed everything. <laughs> in Facebook, if she goes back in the Facebook, it'll still be there. Yeah, if you go back in the Facebook, it'll still be there. You'll be able to run it back. Right on our Facebook page. Right on our Facebook page. Amen. Uh, uh, let me see. You can listen to it again on YouTube. Oh, sister, sister, sister Nakia, she addressed that too. It, it's possible to run this back because uh, I missed everything. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, um, I can put it on YouTube too. Sister, yes. Sister, she's addressing, Sister Nikki addressing your question. Yes, you can listen to it again on YouTube. Mm -hmm. we're, we're on there too. You can listen to the whole thing. And uh, also, uh, Sister Montgomery says, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love our me all these means of communicating. And we're all here together. We're all here together. Amen. All right. Uh, we have here. Uh, so, uh, why, you get why you get your prayer requests together. You know, uh, we have our uh, Zoom that you address that's uh, on Facebook that you can see. Uh, you can uh, come to our Sunday uh, noon Bible study. Our sister to sister uh, will be this Sunday coming up uh, uh, January the 9th at 2.30 p.m. Uh, and then we have our Wednesday night uh, Bible study, a church that shines at 7 p.m. All, all on uh, Zoom and, and Facebook. Uh, we try to put it out there, all, every, every means necessary to get the teaching of God's word out there. Amen. And on uh, uh, Thursday, we have discipleship study for all at 6 p.m. on Thursdays. That's a different Zoom. Uh, uh, at 6 p.m., but all of this is on our webpage. Just go to the webpage. Anything you want to know that we are doing, please go to our webpage, which is cocinnercity.org. Or, or you can download the app. Or you can download the app. <laughs> we got an app. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. See, we 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 modern. We up we up we up we up to date. <laughs> hey, brother Lord. Yes, sir. So we we got it. We got an app because we app to teach, big guy. Yeah. Hey, hey, amen. Hey, amen. Hey, Thank you for making that perfectly clear. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see. I don't see any prayer requests. That so. Uh, let's just go to brother brother Whitfield. You want to close us out with a word of prayer, praying for everybody because everybody need prayer. Yes, sir. I just had a prayer 
request of, of appreciation uh, for those that prayed for my father uh, to uh, uh, let you know that the Whitfield family uh, appreciate your prayers and and he needs uh, many more prayers because um, he's going to be uh, in the hospital a while um, according to the diagnosis I um, heard last night from the doctors and nurses um, at Sinai uh, and then there's no visitors at this time as well so please keep us in prayer especially how uh, my wife and I handle it with uh, the rest of my siblings um, thank you amen amen um, uh, and I'll, I'll just keep 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 everybody in prayer everybody as we continue to try to navigate through this pandemic uh, in our personal lives, in the church, in the workplace, everywhere. We're trying to navigate our way uh, and we're trying to learn how we have to live with the existence of this thing and stay out of harm's way. Man. And stay out of harm's way. You know, uh, but we, you know, uh, just that we can continue to still live. Uh, and Sister Oliver says, pray for my family. Many have uh, uh, been affected by uh, COVID. And uh, uh, thank you, Sister Oliver. Not only her, but my family, uh, Bill family, uh, uh, different families in the church. Everybody's family. Everybody got somebody that's affected by this within their family. So let's just pray for everybody. Amen. Amen. Let us let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for allowing us to be able to come approach your throne in the first place, um, as humble as we can, uh, praying that uh, the sins that are committed in word, thought, or deed will be cast into the sea of forgiveness so that these things may be um, heard um, beyond these walls of our homes and various places that we are and at this time to be able to reach heaven so that you can uh, do what you do according to your will and not our own will. We just pray for comfort um, and, and compassion and, and carriage and, and all those things that's needed um, for us to be able to uh, continue to uh, fight uh, this good fight of faith. Uh, we thank you for our leadership, uh, Brother Lord, in his capacity of guiding us through the Holy Scriptures, uh, based on how the, the Holy Spirit is, is working in his life and his wife's life. And, and we pray that the things that uh, we were able to hear uh, this morning uh, will not uh, be stolen by the devil. Uh, we just appreciate uh, that we need to continue to walk uh, circumspectively uh, through uh, this life, uh, being guided by the spirit. Uh, we pray that we will not uh, allow the spirit of fear to uh, cause us to be uh, cowardly in our Christian walk um, so that we won't be able to work um, the work that you even sent your son um, to do is to seek and to save that which is lost. Uh, we know that, um, that the COVID is here and all different other diseases that are still here and folk are on medication and we still uh, know that a lot of us are not um, full of the right uh, biblical education um, and dedication so that we can uh, hear you say in that final day thy good and faithful servant well done uh, we just pray that we'll be able to pray that prayer that that can help us to uh, allow folk to come our way so that we can help them to be uh, following your way uh, before it's said and done. Uh, we just pray for our family members and friends and, and even our foes that are suffering from different various of illnesses, uh, uh, things that uh, haven't even been diagnosed at this time, uh, that those things will be uh, taken care of by you in your own way uh, so that we can still remain focused on you and to help others to get um, refocused on the things that they have to uh, be able to uh, uh, 
uh, please you in, in different areas in our lives. We just uh, pray for these continued studies that they will continue to uh, help uh, build us up and help to equip us in a way that um, when the devil comes to, to challenge other folk as well as ourselves, that we will be able to share the truth and love by the way that we walk in Christ, the way that we talk in Christ, the way that we sing in Christ, and, and the way we teach in Christ and other ways and platforms. We just pray that we would just be mindful of uh, our uh, families, knowing that God set up um, the solitary and families, those boundaries, uh, so that we don't trespass against others and, and that we will be able to forgive those that even trespass against us. So those things will not keep a record of those wrongs. Because um, we know that your Bible says that only evil brings up the past. We just pray that we will be walking in sunlight and, and always allowing your, your light uh, to shine in us and around us so that others will uh, not mind uh, being able to uh, receive the mind of Christ through us and from us. Uh, we just thank you for another great opportunity to open up our uh, ears for selective hearing uh, of living the saint life and the sanctified life. Uh, for those that are saved. And we pray that all the things that we heard this, this morning will help those that are unsaved um, to become saved, and especially those that are saved to stay saved. And we just pray uh, for all the, the saints that may not have been able to get on this study as well as those that have been. I pray especially even for my wife that we will continue to grow up in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ as well so that we can be used uh, in the capacity that you have us to be used as well for one another and for others as well. And we just thank you for all the family members of inner city, especially regardless of their status in this life, but more importantly, the status that you see and have laid aside for them in Christ, that they will continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ as well. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer, brother. And uh, we'll see you at the next appointed time, which is tomorrow at 7 p.m. Amen. Amen.